Welcome back. All right, so I got another audio book I'm going to do. Uh, this book is entitled The Kid by the Side of the Road, and it's written by Juan O. Savin. Now, this book was recommended to me by someone that I synchronistically met on Thanksgiving at a friend's family's uh, Thanksgiving party. And my friend was like, hey, Sean, you got to come meet this guy. He knows crazy shit. And I'm like, all right. So I go meet this guy. He introduces himself. I said, hey, I'm Sean. First thing out of his mouth, he says, have you heard of Nasara Jasara? And then I got into a really deep conversation with this guy about the conspiracies, about the quantum financial system, about the bloodlines, everything. So I, I synchronistically met this guy and, and uh, I've kept in touch with him since. And this was the book that he recommend I read. And I actually went ahead and just, I started reading the very first page and I was like, I, I, I got to just record this because I think the subscribers on my channels are, are really going to want to hear about this. I think this is going to connect a lot of dots. So I've, I've only read into the first page so far and we're already getting into like the, the bloodline families that I've been talking about for years on this channel. Uh, the Canaanites, the bloodline of Cain, Cain and Abel, one of the first genetically engineered humans, one of the first murder stories, and um, the you know the, the kings, the the queens, the divine right to rule, the, how they're trying to enslave the world. It's it goes goes right into that. So, um, all right, let's 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 get into this. I think you guys are gonna uh, like this, and I think this is gonna connect a lot of dots with a lot of the other information that I've been discussing on this planet. Chapter one. The Kid by the Side of the Road. As a country, one thing people forget in this modern era is that we've been in a national crisis numerous times, far more than people care to recall. We do remember 9-11, and some of us were around during the President Kennedy's assassination. Then, there was Abraham Lincoln's assassination 150 years ago. But there's a common theme that's been going on through all of those crises that I think we need to revisit today. And that is about who is actually behind the scene orchestrating these events that we are continually put into. Is it always unique players? Or excuse me, uh, yeah, is it always unique players in new situations or is there an underlying theme and a common group of per perpetrators with these crimes against America and the world? Is there an organization of people trying to keep us enslaved? Of course there is. I've been talking about this on this channel for years. All right, sorry, you're going to have to deal with my commentary here and there when I do these audiobooks. Let's continue. Now, if you go back to the origins of our country, there were people who came to this continent and set up colonies, growing the population until it was eventually large enough that local jurisdictions were needed to manage and maintain the organization of streets, taxes, tariffs, property ownership, etc. Then came the creation of the constitutional government from groups of states aligned and working together. But immediately upon signing the Declaration of Independence, that federal system we established called the United States of America essentially needed to declare war against its motherland of England and the ruler, King George. We decided we were no longer going to be ruled from afar by foreign masters. We were not going to be their slaves here, helping to keep them prosperous there. So we declared our independence and had a revolutionary war that went on for a very long time, much longer than most people realize. Through the course of many battles, people were forced to pick a side. The willingness to go against England and King George was not universal from the outset. On numerous occasions, strategies and tactics were compromised by infiltrators and turn coats on both sides. But over time, people's true nature and alliances were revealed, just as is playing out once again before us today 
even in some of the closest to President Washington, became traitors against him and our newly formed country for the gains they would earn from their British partners. And even after we won the Revolutionary War, when the Brits had retreated, we then needed to win a second war against England. The War of 1812 was foisted upon us by the people trying to get control of America again through our money and banking systems. This was a very extensive battle and bad situation that we had to again fight our way out of. But most accounts, or, or excuse me, by most accounts, it was a banker's war to gain control of our banking and monetary systems. They wanted to control our currency, even though the Constitution would only allow for our own government to create our money. As we move forward in time, what happened during Abraham Lincoln's presidency? Early on in his administration, an instigated, or excuse me, early on in his administration and instigated by monarchy agents out of Europe, a rift was accentuated between the northern and southern U.S. With that, another variation of the same old bankers' wars was created. In order to get money to fight that war, Lincoln needed loans from the European banks that held monarchy money, the bloodline family's money. Those 13 bloodline families were uh, re repursue funds to fight the war against the South. But the bankers wanted 24 to 36 percent interest. So Lincoln declined that extortion and used his presidential powers to issue interest free money having no indebtedness to foreign bankers. This currency was based on the good faith and credit of the American people and their government. It was not backed with silver or gold, but it worked for all debts, whether public with government entities or private individuals and their businesses. With green printing on the back, the money that Lincoln issued became known as greenbacks, which is where we get the same term used today. One of the interesting things about those greenbacks is that they were hated by foreign banks. In fact, I want to give you part of an article from the London Times that came out after President Lincoln issued that American, or excuse me, that America-owned currency. Okay, and this, this right here is in quotations. This is the, this is the article. If that mischievous financial policy, which had its origins in the North American Republic, should become endurated, established, down to, to a fixture, then that government will furnish its own money without cost. It will pay off debts and be without debt. It will have all the money necessary to carry on its commerce. It will become prosperous beyond precedent in the history of the civilized governments of the world. The brains and wealth of all the countries will go to North America. That government must be destroyed, or it will destroy every monarchy on the globe. And that is the end of that, um, that London Times article, or the, the quote. The bankers obviously got it. Those 13 royal bloodline families, of which the Rothschilds sit at the head of the table, there in the city of London, understood that the only real threats to their power are sovereign governments like ours that are able to print their interest-free and debt-free paper money. Those bankers knew it would break their power over people in the U.S. and then spread to the rest of the world. Think about that, or excuse me, think about what Lincoln did there after which he was also fought the Civil War and won. A decade after that war ended, greenbacks had become worth as much as gold and had even been moving higher. So today, people are wondering how, how we'll or excuse me, how well we're going to do as a country. 
As I gave this presentation on Patriot Productions social media on April 15th of 2020, not many noticed what happened with the financial institutions during the recent COVID-19 event. President Trump moved the private banking cartel's Federal Reserve back under the U.S. Treasury Authority, where the, the Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, is answerable only to the President of the United States. I remember when this happened. I, I think I did a video about it, too, on uh, when I was doing clip, cryptocurrency vlogs. Yeah, I remember this. This was, I think it was around March, if I'm not mistaken. Let's think about that. You remember those bankers in Lincoln's time when he started our own currency. They felt they had to come back at him. They needed to get him as payback and retaliation for daring to print our own currency and not pay them interest. And in the big picture, understand this. The only place on our planet where the Queen of England or whatever reigning monarch is on the throne in England has to annually present him or herself in front of and bow or courtesy to is the mayor of the city of London. Why? It's because the power behind the throne, which is the real money behind all the royal bloodline families, it's these people that consider themselves to be the descendants of the biblical Cain, who was the firstborn of mankind and its first murderer. These are the kings who presume to rule by what they feel is their blood right. These people who get their power by working as a team to control all the governments of the world by domination of the planet's money. And it's all done out of the city of London. Annually, the Queen of England has to present herself to the mayor of the city of London and does so with her shoes off. She curtsies and defers to that mayor's authority, which comes from the bankers. And it's be because that mayor runs a city-state, the city of London, which is not part of England, but is its own sovereign territory, just as are the city-states of the Vatican and Washington, D.C. During the Kennedy administration, President Kennedy also had a similar situation he also realized that what or excuse me he also realized what was going on with these people so he set out to create our own currency that would again be interest free money remember this is very telling admission from mayor amschel rothschild and it quotes permit me to issue and control the money of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws. When Kennedy came into office, he was fighting these monsters who were really destroying the United States. They created wars and pushed us into all kinds of other efforts we didn't want to take on. And that's because they have always manipulated us in their pursuit of m making money from us. <clears throat> constantly keeping us in whatever battles they'd like, using our citizens and the American military against other lands. They instigate and push wars all over the planet with use of Americans and our military might, as if we're a branch office of their secret service spy agencies around the world. After the Bay of Pigs and various other events, that President Kennedy either dealt with or witnessed, he came up with a solution. On June 4th, 1963, he signed Executive Order 11110, which is an interesting number because World War I ended in the 11th month on the 11th day and at the 11th hour of the day. That is precisely when those in control stopped the, uh, the being knowledge about their codes and numbers, sent them a little coded message with 11. Oh, wait, hang on. Sorry, I, I missed one sentence. So let, me, uh, let me go back and read that again. That is precisely 
when those in control stopped the war. Why? It's because of the numerology. The number 111111 is symbolic for them. President Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy, being knowledgeable about their codes and numbers, sent them a little coded message with 11, with 11s. It said, hey, we're going to stop your wars. It was Kennedy's answer to World War I and World War II, as well as a message for those trying to get us into a World War III and running our country's finances. That executive order gave President Kennedy the legal authority to create money that was interest and debt free, currency belonging only to the American people. It was just what Lincoln had done with his greenbacks. Kennedy had these notes printed blatantly ignoring the Federal Reserve notes from the private banks. Even today, many Americans don't understand that the Federal Reserve and the Internal Revenue Service, also known as the IRS, are no, are no more federal than Federal Express. They are administered by federal employees, but as the U.S. courts have shown, the IRS is a Puerto Rican corporation. And of course, there is nothing in the federal registry identifying an income tax, which is because it's voluntary. Each year, we as Americans voluntarily assess for ourselves a certain amount we supposedly owe. Of course, at the end of the day, it's enforced using the statutes regarding liquor, tobacco, and firearms just as though it is a mandatory tax, and the courts, as well as the rest of our legal system, have gone along with it. In fact, months before 9-11 happened in 2001, Congress had scheduled hearings for October 2001 to look into the legality of the IRS and the way laws surrounding it have been enforced. But those hearings never happened because of 9-11. So, repeatedly, over time, we've had incidents, uh, or we've had incidents occur that change the course of the country. And April seems to be an appealing month for these events. They kind of enjoy making things happen in April. Why is that? Well, most of us probably don't realize that the Gregorian Julian and other calendars that have put forth over time for us to use are not the same calendar used by those people who are engaged against, or the people we are engaged against. These royal and begging families actually go by the Babylonian calendar. And with that, by their making of time, they be, uh, the beginning of a new millennium for this Babylonian group, a thousand-year period of the new world they want to see created, occurred in the, the spring of 2012. We're just ending the seventh year and the beginning of the eighth of a new millennium for these Babylonians. And eight is the, their number of the new day. It's the number of Horus, or the rising sun, having to do with the pagan festival of Ishtar, in parentheses, Easter. To them, 2020 is just the beginning of year eight, the new day, and they wanted to get it off to a good start. It would contend that this COVID-19 crisis we've been subjected to here in spring of 2020, was a sort of blood sacrifice to their gods that they intended for the beginning of the new millennium, having it began bathed in blood. Now, we are, or when we look back in history at events that have occurred during this time of year, there is another, or there is another that stands out. It was, it was kind of the 9-11 of its era, but people in the know, behind the scenes, 
understood exactly what the significance truly was. But they weren't heard. That monumental event was the sinking of the Titanic on April 14th, 1912. In the calm waters of the ice-cold North Atlantic 100 years before the end of another Babylonian millennium, the Titanic sailed at maximum speed across the o- or across that ocean on a pitch black, star-filled, and moonless night into a known field of icebergs that had been numerous, or excuse me, there had been numerous radio reports concerning the location of those many drifting masses of glacial ice. At the time, radio communications were done ship to ship and port to port by telegraph. Unreleased and unknown to the public in those days was the capability of, tr- or excuse me, was the capability to triangulate a ship's uh, relative position using radio signal strength. From their positions nearby, other ships, which were spotted for the night, including, by some reports, a rudimentary early submarine, had been tracking the location of the icebergs in that area. Some contend that the iceberg field's location information was being conveyed to the captain of the Titanic. He was responsible for precisely aiming the Titanic at the center of the field of icebergs during those very dark midnight hours. Did he maybe have a deal lined up or somehow or up to somehow get off the boat after? What was promised or excuse me, was that promise not honored? We don't know. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to take a little break right there and then uh, we'll continue the rest in the next upload.